Yakuza. Also known as, are members of transnational organized crime syndicates originating in Japan. The Japanese police, and media by request of the police, call them, while the Yakuza call themselves. The Western equivalent for the term Yakuza would be gangster, meaning an individual involved in a mafia like a criminal organization. The Yakuza are notorious for their strict codes of conduct, their organized fiefdom nature and for several unconventional ritual practices such as Yubitsum. Yakuza members are often described as males with heavily tattooed bodies and slicked hair, yet this group is still regarded as being among the most sophisticated and wealthiest criminal organizations. At their height, the Yakuza maintained a large presence in the Japanese media and operated internationally. In fact, in the early 1960s police estimated that Yakuza had a membership of 184,100. However, in recent years their numbers have dwindled with the latest figure from the National Police Agency estimating that as of 2016 the number of members in all 22 designated gangs was 39,100. This decline is often attributed to changing market opportunities and several legal and social developments in Japan which discourage the growth of Yakuza membership. Yet, despite their dwindling numbers, the Yakuza still regularly engage in an array of criminal activities and many Japanese citizens remain fearful of the threat these individuals pose to the safety of their daily lives. However, there remains no strict prohibition on Yakuza membership in Japan today. Although much legislation has been passed by the Japanese government aimed at increasing liability for criminal activities and impeding revenue. The name Yakuza originates from the traditional Japanese card game Oichokabu, a game in which the goal is to draw three cards adding up to a value of 9. If the sum of the hand exceeds 10, the second digit is used as the total instead, with the exception of 10. If the three cards drawn are 893, the score is 20 and therefore 0 making it the worst possible hand that can be drawn. Despite uncertainty about the single origin of Yakuza organizations, most modern Yakuza derive from two classifications which emerged in the Mid-Edo period, Tekia, those who primarily peddled illicit, stolen, or shoddy goods, and Bakudo, those who were involved in or participated in gambling. Tekia were considered one of the lowest social groups during the Edo period. As they began to form organizations of their own, they took over some administrative duties relating to commerce, such as stall allocation and protection of their commercial activities. During Shinto festivals, these peddlers opened stalls and some members were hired to act as security. Each peddler paid rent in exchange for a stall assignment on protection during the fair. The Tekia were a highly structured and hierarchical group with the Oibun at the top and Kobun at the bottom. This hierarchy resembles a structure similar to the family as the Oibun was often regarded as a surrogate father and the Kobun is surrogate children. During the Edo period, the Tekia were formally recognized by the government. At this time, the Oibun were appointed as supervisors and granted near Samue status meaning they were allowed the dignity of a surname and two swords. Bakudo had a much lower social standing even than traders, as gambling was illegal. Many small gambling houses cropped up in abandoned temples or shrines at the edge of towns and villages all over Japan. Most of these gambling houses ran loan sharking businesses for clients, and they usually maintained their own security personnel. The places themselves, as well as the Bakuto, were regarded with disdain by society at large, and much of the undesirable image of the Yakuza originates from Bakuto, this includes the name Yakuza itself. Because of the economic situation during the mid-period and the predominance of the merchant class, Developing Yakuza groups were composed of misfits and delinquents that had joined or formed Yakuza groups to extort customers in local markets by selling fake or shoddy goods. The roots of the Yakuza can still be seen today in initiation ceremonies, which incorporate tekia or bakudo rituals. Although the modern Yakuza has diversified, some gangs still identify with one group or the other, for example, a gang whose primary source of income is illegal gambling may refer to themselves as bakudo. During the formation of the Yakuza, they adopted the traditional Japanese hierarchical structure of Oibun Kobun where Kobun know their allegiance to the. In a much later period, the code of was developed where loyalty and respect are a way of life. The Oibun Kobun relationship is formalized by ceremonial sharing of sake from a single cup. This ritual is not exclusive to the Yakuza, it is also commonly performed in traditional Japanese Shinto weddings, and may have been a part of sworn brotherhood relationships. During the World War II period in Japan, 
the more traditional Tekia slash Bakuda form of organization declined as the entire population was mobilized to participate in the war effort and society came under strict military government. However, after the war, the Yakuza adapted again. Prospective Yakuza come from all walks of life. The most romantic tales tell how Yakuza accept sons who have been abandoned or exiled by their parents. Many Yakuza start out in junior high school or high school as common street thugs or members of Bosozoku gangs. Perhaps because of its lower socio-economic status, numerous Yakuza members come from Barakum in an ethnic Korean background. Yakuza groups are headed by a Noibun or who gives orders to his subordinates, the Kobun. In this respect, the organization is a variation of the traditional Japanese senpai kahai model. Members of Yakuza gangs cut their family ties and transfer their loyalty to the gang boss. They refer to each other as family members, fathers and elder and younger brothers. The Yakuza is populated almost entirely by men and the very few women who are acknowledged are the wives of bosses, who are referred to by the title. When the third Yamaguchi Gumi boss died in the early 1980s, his wife took over as boss of Yamaguchi Gumi, albeit for a short time. Yakuza have a complex organizational structure. There is an overall boss of the syndicate, the Kumiko, and directly beneath him are the Psycho Komen and Soanbuko. The second in the chain of command is the Waka Gashira, who govern several gangs in the region with the help of a Fuku Anbuko who is himself responsible for several gangs. The regional gangs themselves are governed by their local boss, the Shaitigas Hira. Each member's connection is ranked by the hierarchy of Sakazuki. Kumiko are at the top, and control various. The Psycho Komen control their own turfs in different areas or cities. They have their own underlings, including other underbosses, advisors, accountants and enforcers. Those who have received seek from Oibun are part of the immediate family and ranked in terms of elder or younger brothers. However, each Kobun, in turn, can offer Sakazuki as Oibun to his underling to form an affiliated organization, which might in turn form lower ranked organizations. In the Yamaguchi Gumi, which controls some 2,500 businesses and 500 Yakuza groups, there are fifth rank subsidiary organizations. Yubitsum, or the cutting off of one's finger, is a form of penance or apology. Upon a first offense, the transgressor must cut off the tip of his left little finger on give the severed portion to his boss. Sometimes an underboss may do this in penance to the oibun if he wants to spare a member of his own gang from further retaliation. This practice has started to wane amongst the younger members, due to it being an easy identifier for police. Its origin stems from the traditional way of holding a Japanese sword. The bottom three fingers of each hand are used to grip the sword tightly, with the thumb and index fingers slightly loose. The removal of digits starting with the little finger moving up the hand to the index finger progressively weakens the person's sword grip. The idea is that a person with a weak sword grip then has to rely more on the group for protection, reducing individual action. In recent years, prosthetic fingertips have been developed to disguise this distinctive appearance. Many Yakuza have full body tattoos. These tattoos, known as a resume in Japan, are still often hand poked, that is, the ink is inserted beneath the skin using non-electrical, handmade and handheld tools with needles of sharpened bamboo or steel. The procedure is expensive, painful, and can take years to complete. When Yakuza members play Oicho Kabu cards with each other, they often remove their shirts or open them up and drape them around their waist. This enables them to display their full body tattoos to each other. This is one of the few times that Yakuza members display their tattoos to others, as they normally keep them concealed in public with long-sleeved and high neck shirts. When new members join, they are often required to remove their trousers as well and reveal any lower body tattoos. Although Yakuza membership has declined since the implementation of the Anti-Boryo Kutan Act in 1992, according to the National Police Agency there are still approximately 39,100 active Yakuza members in Japan as of 2016. The Yakuza does not consist of just one group, rather there are many different syndicate groups that together form one of the largest organized crime groups in the world. A is a particularly harmful Yakuza group registered by the Prefectural Public Safety Commissions under the enacted in 1991. Under the Organized Crime Countermeasures Law, the Prefectural Public Safety Commissions have registered 21 syndicates as the designated Boryokudan groups. Fukuoka Prefecture has the largest number of designated Boryokudan groups among all of the prefectures, at 5, the Kudokai, the Taishukai, the Fukuhakukai, the Dojinkai and the Namikawakai.
I. Designated Boryokudan groups are usually large organizations, however, there are some exceptions such as the name Ikawakai, which, with its blatant arm conflicts with the Dojinkai, was registered only two years after its formation. Yakuza are regarded as semi-legitimate organizations. For example, immediately after the Kobe earthquake, the Yamaguchi Gumi, whose headquarters are in Kobe, mobilized itself to provide disaster relief services, and this was widely reported by the media as a contrast to the much slower response by the Japanese government. The Yakuza repeated their aid after the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, with groups opening their offices to refugees and sending dozens of trucks with supplies to affected areas. For this reason, many Yakuza regard their income and hustle as a collection of a feudal tax. Many Yakuza syndicates, notably the Yamaguchi Gumi, officially forbid their members from engaging in drug trafficking, while some Yakuza syndicates, notably the Dojin Kai, are heavily involved in it. Some Yakuza groups are known to deal extensively in human trafficking. The Philippines, for instance, is a source of young women. Yakuza trick girls from impoverished villages into coming to Japan, where they are promised respectable jobs with good wages. Instead, they are forced into becoming sex workers and strippers. Yakuza frequently engage in a unique form of Japanese extortion known as Sakaya. In essence, this is a specialized form of protection racket. Instead of harassing small businesses, the Yakuza harass a stockholder's meeting of a larger corporation. They simply scare the ordinary stockholder with the presence of Yakuza operatives, who obtain the right to attend the meeting by making a small purchase of stock. Yakuza also have ties to the Japanese realty market and banking, through Jijia. Jijia specialize in inducing holders of small real estate to sell their property so that estate companies can carry out much larger development plans. Japan's bubble economy of the 1980s is often blamed on real estate speculation by banking subsidiaries. After the collapse of the Japanese property bubble, a manager of a major bank in Nagoya was assassinated, and much speculation ensued about the banking industry's indirect connection to the Japanese underworld. Yakuza have been known to make large investments in legitimate, mainstream companies. In 1989, Susumu Ishii, the Oibun of the Inagawa Kai bought 255 million US dollars worth of Tokyo Kyuko Electric Railways stock. Japan's Securities and Exchange Surveillance Commission has knowledge of more than 50 listed companies with ties to organized crime, and in March 2008, the Osaka Securities Exchange decided to review all listed companies and expel those with Yakuza ties. As a matter of principle, theft is not recognized as a legitimate activity of Yakuza. This is in line with the idea that their activities are semi-open, theft by definition would be a covert activity. More importantly, such an act would be considered a trespass by the community. Also, Yakuza usually do not conduct the actual business operation by themselves. Core business activities such as merchandising, loan sharking or management of gambling houses are typically managed by non-Yakuza members who pay protection fees for their activities. There is much evidence of Yakuza involvement in international crime. There are many tattooed Yakuza members imprisoned in various Asian prisons for such crimes as drug trafficking and arms smuggling. In 1997, one verified Yakuza member was caught smuggling 4 kilograms of heroin into Canada. Prior to his death in 1980, former Italian-American mafia member Mickey Zaffirano, who controlled pornography rackets across the United States for the Bonanna family, was overheard talking about the enormous profits from the pornography trade that both families could make together. Another Yakuza racket is bringing women of other ethnicities slash races, especially East European and Asian, to Japan under the lure of a glamorous position, then forcing the women into prostitution. Because of their history as a legitimate feudal organization and their connection to the Japanese political system through the Uyoku, Yakuza are somewhat a part of the Japanese establishment, with six fan magazines reporting on their activities. Yakuza involvement in politics functions similarly to that of a lobbying group, with them backing those who share in their opinions or beliefs. One study found that one in ten adults under the age of 40 believed that the Yakuza should be allowed to exist. In the 1980s in Fukuoka, a Yakuza war spiraled out of control and civilians were hurt. It was a large conflict between the Yamaguchi Gumi and Dojin Kai, called the Yamamichi War. The police stepped in and forced the Yakuza bosses on both sides to declare a truce in public. At various times, people in Japanese cities have launched anti-Yakuza campaigns with mixed and varied success. In March 1995, 
the Japanese government passed the Act for Prevention of Unlawful Activities by Criminal Gang Members, which made traditional racketeering much more difficult. Beginning in 2009, led by agency chief Takaharu Ando, Japanese police began to crack down on the gangs. Kodokai chief Kiyoshi Takayama was arrested in late 2010. In December 2010, police arrested Yamaguchi Gumi's alleged number three leader, Tadashi Iri. According to the media, encouraged by tougher anti Yakuza laws and legislation, local governments and construction companies have begun to shun or ban Yakuza activities or involvement in their communities or construction projects. The police are handicapped, however, by Japan's lack of an equivalent to plea bargaining, witness protection, or the United States Racketeer Influence Sedan Corrupt Organizations Act. Laws were enacted in Osaka and Tokyo in 2010 and 2011 to try to combat Yakuza influence by making it illegal for any business to do business with the Yakuza. Following the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami on March 11, 2011, the Yakuza sent hundreds of trucks filled with food, water, blankets, and sanitary accessories to aid the people in the affected areas of the natural disaster. CNN Mexico said that although the Yakuza operates through extortion and other violent methods, they moved, swiftly and quietly to provide aid to those most in need. Such actions by the Yakuza are a result of their knowing of what it is like to fend for yourself, without any government aid or community support, because they are also considered outcast and dropouts from society. In addition, the Yakuza's Code of Honor reportedly values justice and duty above anything else, and forbids allowing others to suffer. Yakuza activity in the United States is mostly relegated to Hawaii but they have made their presence known in other parts of the country, especially in Los Angeles and the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as Seattle, Las Vegas, Arizona, Virginia, Chicago, and New York City. The Yakuza are said to use Hawaii as a midway station between Japan and mainland America, smuggling methamphetamine into the country and smuggling firearms back to Japan. They easily fit into the local population, since many tourists from Japan and other Asian countries visit the islands on a regular basis and there is a large population of residents who are of full or partial Japanese descent. They also work with local gangs, funneling Japanese tourists to gambling parlors and brothels. In California, the Yakuza have made alliances with local Korean gangs as well as Chinese triads. The alliances with Vietnamese gangs were used as muscle, as they had potential to become extremely violent as needed. In New York City, they appear to collect finder's fees from Russian, Irish and Italian mafiosos and businessmen for guiding Japanese tourists to gambling establishments, both legal and illegal. Handguns manufactured in the U.S. account for a large share of handguns seized in Japan, followed by China and the Philippines. In 1990, a Smith & Wesson .38 caliber revolver that cost $275 in the U.S. could sell for up to $4,000 in Tokyo. By 1997 it would sell for only $500, due to the proliferation of guns in Japan during the 1990s. The FBI suspects that the Yakuza use various operations to launder money in the U.S. In 2001, the FBI's representative in Tokyo arranged for Tadamasa Goto, the head of the group Goto Gumi, to receive a liver transplant at the UCLA Medical Center in the United States, in return for information of Yamaguchi Gumi operations in the U.S. This was done without prior consultation of the NBA. The journalist who uncovered the deal received threats by Goto and was given police protection in the U.S. and in Japan. In 2009, Yakuza member Yoshiaki Sawada was released from North Korea after spending five years in the country for attempting to bribe a North Korean official and smuggle drugs. According to a 2006 speech by Mitsuhiro Shugenuma, a former officer of the Public Security Intelligence Agency, Around 60% of Yakuza members come from Borakomen, the descendants of a feudal outcast class and approximately 30% of them are Japanese-born Koreans, and only 10% are from non-Borakomen Japanese and Chinese ethnic groups. The Borakomen are a group that is socially discriminated against in Japanese society, whose recorded history goes back to the Heian period in the 11th century. The Borakomen are descendants of outcast communities of the pre-modern, especially the feudal era mainly those with occupations considered tainted with death or ritual impurity, such as butchers, executioners, undertakers, or leather workers. They traditionally lived in their own secluded hamlets. According to David E. Kaplan and Alec Dubro, Brackhoman account for about 70% of the members of Yamaguchi Gumi, the largest Yakuza syndicate in Japan.
Britain. While ethnic Koreans make up only half a percent of the Japanese population, they are a prominent part of Yakuza, perhaps because they suffer severe discrimination in Japanese society alongside the Borakumin. In the early 1990s, 18 of 90 top bosses of Inagawa Kai were ethnic Koreans. The Japanese National Police Agency suggested Koreans compose 10% of the Yakuza proper and 70% of Borakumin in the Yamaguchi Gumi. Some of the representatives of the designated Boryokudan are also Koreans. The Korean significance had been an untouchable taboo in Japan and one of the reasons that the Japanese version of Kaplan and Dubros Yakuza had not been published until 1991 with the deletion of Korean-related descriptions off the Yamaguchi Gumi. Japanese-born people of Korean ancestry are considered resident aliens because of their nationality and are often shunned in legitimate trades, and are therefore embraced by the Yakuza precisely because they fit the group's outsider image. Notable Yakuza members of Korean ancestry include Hisayuki Machi, the founder of the Tosaikai, Takutaro Takayama, the president of the fourth generation Azuko Tetsukai, Jiro Kiyoda, the president of the fifth generation Inagawa Kai, Hirofumi Hashimoto, the head of the Kyokushin Rango Kai, and the bosses of the sixth, seventh Sakum Gumi. Since 2011, Regulations that made business with members illegal as well as enactments of Yakuza exclusion ordinances led to the group's membership decline from its 21st century peak. Methods include that which brought down Al Capone, checking the organization's finances. The financial services agency ordered Mizuho Financial Group Incorporated to improve compliance and that its top executives report by October 28, 2013 what they knew and when about a consumer credit affiliate found making loans to crime groups. This adds pressure to the group from the U.S. as well where an executive order in 2011 required financial institutions to freeze Yakuza assets. As of 2013, the U.S. Treasury Department has frozen about 55,000 U.S. dollars of Yakuza holdings, including two Japan-issued American Express cards. The Yakuza have had mixed relations with Japanese society. They function as a police force in their areas of operation, to help reduce crime. They also provide protection to businesses and relief in times of disaster. These actions have painted Yakuza in a fairly positive light within Japan. However, gang wars, and the use of violence as a tool have caused their approval to fall with the general public. The Yakuza have been represented in media and culture in many different fashions. Creating its own genre of movies within Japan's film industry the portrayal of the Yakuza mainly manifests in one of two archetypes. They are portrayed as either honorable and respectable men or as criminals who use fear and violence as their means of operation. Movies like Battles Without Honor and Humanity and Dead or Alive portray some of the members as violent criminals, with the focus being on the violence, while other movies focus more on the business side of the Yakuza. The Yakuza play a very important role in the Hawaii 5-0 remake. Lead character Kono Kalakawa's husband Adam Noshimori was the former head of the Yakuza who took over after his father Hiro Noshimori died. Adam's brother Michael Noshimori was also part of the Yakuza. The video game series Yakuza portrays the actions of several different ranking members of the Yakuza throughout the series. The series addresses some of the same themes as the Yakuza genre of film does, like violence, honor, politics of the syndicates, etc. The series has been moderately successful. Spawning sequels, spin offs, a live action movie, and a web TV series. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe.